So today, me and Tanya are going to be talking around demystifying creative archetypes. Ooh, I love it when you say it like that. Yes. Demystify. Magical. <laughs> yeah. So initially, what are archetypes? So Jung, obviously, is like the biggest kind of name when it comes to archetypes. Uh, but he believed they were, the, they were the main energy source that exists in everyone's unconscious mind and that they represent our patterns of behavior um, different, in different situations, in different relationships, um, whether it's work, whether it's home, whether it's romance, whether it's friendship. Um, different archetypes manifest themselves within us at all times. Um, there are 12 main archetypal types and me and Tanya will be exploring some of those with you mm. so when being creative we can use archetypes to help clients identify themselves or other people within that and it's easier because we can connect we can relate so we can see ourselves as characters or symbols mm. so the first archetype i've chosen is the magician mm. and the magician's got really strong beliefs constantly growing evolving changing transforming and um, they're intuitive they learn from the mistakes and they're really good at finding compromise um, the first magician that came to my mind or somebody that would fit this profile would be gandalf from the lord of the rings trilogy mm. white uh, gandalf the great gandalf the white so i think that's a really kind of quite strong archetype of character um, then I said that one of the biggest ones I think is the hero and we can all rate, relate to somebody or something that is a hero, somebody that's overcoming all the odds. I mean, first name that comes to my mind, Hercules. Mm. Kind of absolutely, you know, good guy, hero, always going to win no matter what. And quite often it's, um, it's a traumatic event or maybe something to do with their kind of heritage or their birth circumstance that brings out the hero in us. And also, do you know who came to mind for me there was um, in Lord of the Rings, you know, Frodo, who's his friend? I've totally forgot his name. Sam Wise. Sam. Sam. So not like known as the main character, yeah. but really willing to um, be there and almost sacrifice himself for, Absolutely. for, the, for the good cause kind of thing. Um, yeah. So he was the first that came into my mind at that. Yeah. And neither of them asked for it, obviously, and it became Frodo's quest. Sam didn't have to do that but it was the mm. circumstances that unfolded that brought out the hero in him so sometimes we can have like the obvious hero and then also the hidden hero the person Absolutely. working behind the scenes to make something happen yeah yeah and if you think about about that situation with Frodo and Sam if it wasn't for Sam they would never have destroyed the ring mm. oh I just got goosebumps so I need to watch that again I forgot how much I loved that fantastic <laughs> So the next one is the sage or the mentor, a wise, free, creative person. And they live to, to learn, to understand, to understand the world and everything in it, everything that surrounds it. Um, can you think of anyone, Tanya? Yeah, do you know, um, I'm thinking about the, like the learner types, mm. like those, I was thinking about movies that I've watched where people are, are constantly learning. Like, do you remember in Buffy? the vampire slayer, um, her mentor. Yeah. In Giles. That. Yeah, Giles, exactly. He's, yeah. They're people who are just, they're, they're always trying to find a solution to something um, yeah. or looking for the next step or trying to develop something. So he was the first person that came to me. Yeah. For me, this is very much about my self-actualization, the likes yeah. of Gandhi. Always trying to, striving to be the, the best you can be, to be more knowledgeable, to, to have more learning, to share that as well. Mm. Um, then obviously the innocent, always optimistic, sees the good. We, I think everybody knows something like this. They always see the good in everybody, always searching for happiness. And they can seem really quite childlike and simple in their ways. Literally is what you see is what you get. Um, a branding for the innocent would be the likes of McDonald's, Golden Arches. Mm. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, just very yeah. simplistic. You know what it is. Yeah, what you see, what you get. Um, and yet the title, yeah. Innocent, like I would struggle with that when you put something like yeah. McDonald's next to that, but you can understand the branding. branding what you see is what you simple. get. Very simple, understanding it. Um, I'm also thinking, uh, I think I know people who definitely fall into this character, I think. Mm. Um, and they almost have an, an innocent look about them as well. 
like a, a yeah. way of holding their body and the movement and the words and um so I, yeah i can really connect with a few people straight away in that yeah i mean a, 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 a fairy tale character would be perhaps cinderella mm. always wanting to see the good in everyone and everything just simply searching to be happy mm. So the jester, not taking too, things too seriously, including themselves. So always wanting to laugh, using humour as well to deflect stressful situations. Mm. And I think that quite often people do use humour to deflect and we can see that a lot with clients as well. Mm. If things are getting too painful or if we as therapists get too close to something, they'll often mm. use humour to deflect. Robin Williams comes to mind with that, actually. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that there is that shadow so. side to that as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and all, all of these do have a shadow side, mm. you know, as we all do. Um, the orphan, feeling hurt and let down, often playing the victim. Sometimes pretending to be more innocent than what they actually are. And so that, that side, again, that shadow side where they can be quite manipulative. So with that as well, I'm feeling like um, when we talk about the orphan as an archetype, it's not that you um, literally had to be an orphan. It was that maybe there's an abandonment, something you feel abandoned, a sense of abandonment and something of being ignored, maybe. Um, so this is maybe quite a powerful one. I had quite a reaction to this in my stomach. Yeah. felt like a, oh, and a, like a heaviness in my chest to this because it felt like the words felt quite heavy to read yeah. almost. And, uh, but I can really relate to that. In lots of different ways. So that sense as well, the world against them. Mm. Even in relationships as adults. I I know in relationships, actually, I I can be the orphan sometimes. Mm. Um, If I feel like uh, maybe um, it's definitely abandonment or like a lack of trust or um, a lack of respect within a relationship, I can can turn sometimes to being a little bit manipulative in a way of just wanting a bit of attention from someone. Yeah. Um, so maybe sulking, for instance, or going dead quiet and using that I'm fine approach when I'm really not. That that's kind me. of thing. Yeah. So I think I can really relate even in a relationship that that's yeah. as an adult. Yeah. So the explorer, somebody that wants freedom to travel, very resourceful, inquisitive, always wanting to push the boundaries, go that one step further. But again, this, this can become dangerous. Mm um there's a lot of um you know they, they can how many times have we had people go into the top of like you know mount everest all the bodies that are frozen up there because mm. it's that just pushing it too far the risk-taking behaviors that come with that um for me as soon as i think of explorer i think of bear grills mm. the first thing comes to my mind bear grills kind of want to go out there wanting to explore um or indiana jones if you want a kind of you know movie kind of figure again exploring the adventure the excitement that adrenaline adrenaline junkies mm. what was that oh, story yes. the never-ending story did you ever watch that yeah oh i yeah, love absolutely. those characters and the flying absolutely. dog and, yeah yeah they all just yeah. came to mind when you said that the explorer yes that's mm. beautiful mm. yeah and then obviously we've got rulers and they're generally born leaders and can provide stability and um, they like people to follow the leads but they can be quite controlling mm. and for a ruler can either be somebody really um you know who benefits their community who benefits their their country whatever it is but actually they can, can become quite tyrannical mm. as well so two kind of flip sides of a coin for me in my mind on this would be winston churchill and hitler Mm. yeah so, i've got two current people in mind actually as well but i i feel bad saying that out loud because people might disagree um with that but i've got some really current i'm thinking like barack obama and mm. other <laughs> donald trump perhaps yeah yeah, <laughs> but yeah you know and at the end of the day that is that's it's mm. our perception so when it i just have Winston Churchill and hitler yeah you know, there might be people that disagree mm, absolutely that, that's um, you know, because it, it, it is, that's the one thing about archetypes, they're not set in stone, so it's very much our perception mm. of them. Mm. And that's something we're going to go on to. So the creator, full of ideas, massive imagination, and really enjoys transforming old things to new. 
yeah. really out of the box thinker, self-sufficient. And the first person that came to my mind on this was um, Tony Stark um, ah. or Robert Downey Jr. from the uh, Avengers. Mm. Kind of really self-sufficient and a little bit arrogant with it as well. Really out of the box thinker. Um, huge imagination. But mm. and the downside of the creator can be that perfectionism everything has to be perfect mm. and that can sometimes really take over and that can also stop them actually achieving anything because mm. there's that fear that it's not perfect so that they're always trying to attain that perfection mm. so nothing is completed mm. and also i'm thinking of like that you know when you get in that flow within art and how that nice set this really awesome feeling to be in when you're creating something um and also there can be that um, danger of getting totally lost within that so yeah. not wanting to um, take part in normal everyday life at yeah. all. Um, so a distraction kind of something yeah. or dissociation kind of something. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's lots of interesting ways to look at both sides of that. Yeah. Losing that connection with other people because mm. they're so absorbed in what they're doing. So that those great kind of minds. Mm. Oh, the caregiver, um, I think as well, you know, this, this is one of the real big archetypes that, that always wanting to protect other people, to be there for other people, quite often putting other people's needs before their own, always trying to make mm. things better for everybody. And I think as counsellors, I think it, a lot of us initially, I know I did when I went into this profession, was to always to try and make things better for other people. Mm. I think it's really important that we recognise, and this falls really well into our self-care month, August, mm. um, is making sure that you know we look after ourselves as well, and that we don't sacrifice our own well-being mm. someone came into my thinking um, i won't say who it is but their voice was strong and clear with us and it was a voice of um do not realize everything i do for you you're so ungrateful everything i have to do for you all i have to do to provide for you ah, da, 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 da. there's like quite a strong sense so it's interesting it's that because this is a provider caregiver person um mm. but also needed to constantly remind a person about that yeah. as well which would instill like guilt and shame from Absolutely. opening your mouth and all those kinds of heavy feelings with that um so a loving caregiver and also a I feel bad Marta. because I'm have to caregive all the time yeah so, so maybe the there's a thing that balance yeah if you don't have that balance in the middle you can easily fall into shadow with that yeah. kind of thing which is understandable and if you put compassion it's understandable you would go there so about finding that balance and how important that is yeah absolutely mm. and quite often we have clients that that feel so guilty and so responsible because they've been the cause of somebody else's is issues and quite often that can be a caregiver mm. who, who is taking on that role of the martyr just reminding the individual that you know I've done this for you, I've done that for you, I never have this because I've given it to you. There's so much pressure there, there's so many conditions placed. Mm. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, that they don't always become a martyr. Um, I mean, caregiver, I'm thinking, you know, Mother Teresa, mm. straight to my mind, like kind of always wanting to put other people first and really protect people from harm, mm. like really gentle. Yeah. The rebel. So really independent. Um, the rebel can actually find it difficult to trust. Um, and they can be quite self-destructive. Um, and their behaviours can often be the, so the ends justify the means. Mm. Um, one of the archetypes for the rebel um, is Robin Hood. Ah, mm. so, so obviously that justification, you know, I'm a case born into privilege. But actually, I don't agree with the institution now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take from them, and I'm gonna give to them, mm. and I'm gonna justify this um, because you know I'm doing a good thing at the end of the day. So, ah. and also, the, I'm wondering if there's something in this, you know, like social media, right? Mm -hmm. When you've got like um, wars going on between people, and there's always yeah. that kind of ending of, well, it's just my opinion. Um, and it's how I feel, even though maybe your statements have caused some harm to other people in that way, um, that there's this kind of feeling of it's okay because it's my opinion yeah. kind of thing that that would kind of almost fit this. Um, and, or if you disagree with something, you know, in yeah. some way and you want to change of some kind yeah. that you could be quite manipulative in how you bring that change about Absolutely. how you put other people down and silence other people to bring that about. Mm -hmm. 
So that's quite interesting. I see yeah. that a lot on social media. Yeah. And obviously another shadow side of the rebel is the fact that, that in doing what they feel is justified, innocence can be hurt or harmed mm. within that. Mm. And then we have the lover. Passionate, very spontaneous, um, really appreciates beauty in any shape or form. Um, and they really enjoy relationships. They enjoy intimacy. They enjoy that one-to-one -one connection with people. Mm. Okay, so creative archetypes. This is a fun bit we were playing with. Yay. <laughs> so, I mean, there's so many. And, and as we were doing these, more were just coming into my head. Um, and obviously, this, this is our perception of these and your clients yourselves you might have complete they may, might mean completely different things mm. so the first one obviously we did we did the lighthouse um and that was very much about being just feeling safe feeling grounded feeling protected and again the lighthouse itself signifies like you know going to shore going to safety it's a warning it's a warning you know, don't or don't come here you know it's not safe here mm. that's the whole idea behind it rainbow obviously we've had so many beautiful rainbows this week we had a triple one um here yesterday which was just stunning mm. and again if i think about rainbows for me it's a very spiritual connection it's connecting the earth the heavens full of positivity full of promise new beginnings potential mm. you know when you say that as well if i think of like a rainbow person type of archetype because they're people these aren't they um yeah. The rainbow, somebody walks in the room and brings the joy with them. Yeah. Absolutely. They have this kind of sense that, well, this is my own take on this. Mm -hmm. They have this kind of sense of like, ah, when they're coming in, yeah. of like bringing that hope and that positivity and that yeah. fresh beginning. Mm. And again, that's, the, that's the, the, the idea behind rainbow babies, isn't it? Yes. It's a baby born after, after you've, mm. you've lost a baby and the joy that mm. they bring with them. Obviously, you can never replace the baby that's mm. been lost, but the joy that they bring and the new, mm. new beginnings oh that's really warm i felt like yeah. a ah, such a sense of warmth when yeah. you said that. Mm. which leads us perfectly into mother earth mm. you know the goddess the life giver kind of really sensual mm. um oh yeah i feel quite emotional mm. um and then oh, prince charming mm. you know, is it is he the rescuer is it's that journey from from being a boy mm. to adulthood Mm. Um, which actually leads quite on to Peter Pan, really. That kind of Peter mm. Pan, kind of the adolescent, that responsible, which is the shadow side. The light side, quite playful, fun-loving. Mm. Um, uh, for me, I, I put the Robin as well. For me, the Robin is very much kind of spiritual, mystical, very much mm. like the unicorn, very pure. Um, as well, there's that, there's that link with, with um, my my beliefs with the robin um, mm -hmm. that that little thing where robin red breast in a cage sets all heaven to a rage mm -hmm. um, and I always I always feel that's very very powerful mm -hmm. and the pot of gold as well kind of you know lucky but you've got ambition you've got this ambition to get to there to get to where you want to be you've got leprechauns um, which, which again leads into the look. So many different creative archetypes. Mm. And this is just a fraction. I mean, we could go on mm. about this all day. Um, I was thinking about there, obviously, the owl, very wise, very mystical. Mm. Um, the crow, for me, I think about the crow, the arch that archetype is quite kind of dark. Mm. Um, so. I also, when you were mentioning about. Um the prince charming i thought what is the opposite like in a in a divine like a feminine thing i was thinking about like a fairy godmother so you know she's very she's there to grant wishes um you know to bring change but could also be quite controlling you know she has the ability to make change so in some of the things we watch with as a fairy godmother she's like no 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 you will do this and da 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 da, -da and this will happen and yeah. something so there is that light and shadow even with that and if you look at Shrek, the fairy godmother actually becomes quite manipulative. She exactly. set her own agenda. Perfect own example. Agenda. I knew yeah. there was one out there. I just couldn't think of it. Yeah. Another <laughs> archetype, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Yes. 
obviously, you know, Sleeping Beauty is, you know, this, this um, princess, quite naive, quite innocent, quite gentle, but she can also be seen as somebody that just doesn't want to address mm. what's happening around her. Is she waiting she, to be rescued all the time as well? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She doesn't, she doesn't want to see the dark side of things. She doesn't want to see, you know, the, the evil witch, Maleficent. Mm. Um, obviously, Maleficent's only evil in that one. Obviously, mm. in the new remake, she's actually not. Um, you know, the, the, mm. this, you, could, you could go on about this mm. for forever. Um, so, we invite you to create a representation of an archetype you're drawn to work with. So it can be anyone, anyone that fits any of those 12, one that doesn't, it can be a creative one, it can be one that we already have mentioned. Use any creative medium you're drawn to. Mm. You can use paints, sands, clay, cards, wh whatever, however you want to do it. Mm. Explore your shadow and your light aspects of the archetype. And we invite you to join us for our reflection next Wednesday at half past six in the membership. Mm. Gorgeous. So. Okay. Ooh. The fun bit. So we thought you. Um, some of the ways that we like to work with clients in our counselling or coaching work uh, is working with cards. And a set of cards that we really enjoy to explore is the values cards. Um, you can buy them online. And the values card have a load of different words that represent values in us. Um, and what's really great with looking at values is that we just explored how archetypes and creative archetypes and archetypes that haven't even been invented yet um, all have values and different words that are associated with them. So we thought that I would pull a few of these cards um, and Gaina doesn't know what's coming. So Gaina, that would be the first the word, pig. the first instant, the guinea pig, the first um, kind of archetype or person that might represent an archetype or it might even not be a person, although a person would be helpful. Um, real <laughs> or imagined. That. It could be both. Why not? Mm -hmm. who's, who's to say whether it should be real or imagined? Um, and we'll see what happens. And a few might pop up for me too. We'll, we'll see what happens in there. Pressure, so, pressure. Okay. I want to show we're not... Um, I haven't planned anything. That's what I'm trying to show people. I haven't planned anything. I can feel you. I haven't planned anything in my chest. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh. I'm not sure we'll go with this one. I'll read well, the word anyways. V1. We'll see. See how it Just do it. That. Sensuality. Oh, Lady Godiva. Yes. I had that in my mind too. Oh, weird. Brilliant. I know. But We're I twinned think... again. I know, it's only because the conversation we had just before training around sensuality, I thought, oh, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> timing. yeah absolutely. Um, that, I think, I mean, for me, myself, I am a very kind of sensual person. Mm. Um, I can be a little bit manipulative that, with that occasionally with my husband um, to meet my own needs. That's as far as I'm going mm. with that one. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that whole, that kind of archetype, that sensuality, uh, yeah, Lady Godiva would, would be for me. Um, very kind of flowing, free-flowing. Um, I've jumped straight to heroin. Mm. Kind of really, kind of like, you know, really kind of powerful female figure. Mm. Um, but obviously that's my perception mm. of that word. Uh, you know, I can really relate to what you're saying. Many um, heroines or the whole feminine image or divine image in feminism um, does represent, um, you know, like a woman's sensuality in some ways. Yeah. So that's a beautiful part of us as women that we can yeah. access that touch and sensuality and relationship and being and nurture and intimacy. Um, so I really love that. And Yeah, I, th yeah. I think so it shows how far we've moved. Mm. Over, over the years that women now can actually embrace the sensuality mm. you know it's not it's not seen as something to be frowned upon mm. yes and I, I think the stronger um stronger we've become i think it really shows how mm. much strength women have have kind of um grown mm. over the years yeah right let's go let's have another look okay let's see what we've got encouragement encouragement so again i'm thinking a mentor sage type person somebody mm -hmm. that 
is going to be there to i mean i know my my supervisor mm -hmm. really encouraging um a previous previous trainer really encouraging uh really supportive really nourishing um, and that really fits in with like the supervision aspect, the coaching aspect, and our community actually really being there to kind of support, nurture, and encourage each other. To mm. so be being um, really being there to celebrate each other's successes as well. That brings in the <laughs> aspect of whether an archetype has to be a one thing or whether it's a body, a body yeah. of, of people, like a community. Yeah. I think would be a great archetype. To explore yeah. as as a new and modern archetype. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Do another one in there. Let's go for this okay. one. Okay. Integrity. Oh. Integrity. Straight away. Mm. Values. Honesty. Um, being authentic, mm. uh, which I think is at a massive part of. I feel that's a massive part of me. Mm. Um, especially within my counselling role, mm. being really, being really. Um, honest and genuine um in my personal life i would say it's really you know living by my beliefs mm. um and not being persuaded by other people to do something that i'm not comfortable with mm. um i'm trying to think if i can think of an example of somebody Joan of Arc. Mm, what a powerful example. Yeah. Ah. Joan yeah. of Arc. So yeah. I had a, um, I had Nelson Mandela and Michelle Obama. So there's obviously a leadership something to me that comes in when I think of integrity. Yeah. Um, in that. So yeah, but Joan of Arc, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for something else. I feel like there's a real feminine theme going through these. There is a bit. I think we've sparked that love. in our love. <laughs> Aphrodite. Aphrodite. The epitome. Yeah. Love and sensuality. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, I've got a real kind of warm mm. sense around this one. Um, and again, that, that, that love, that bond. Again, the goddess, mm. the mother, the child. Yeah really mm. a caregiver all of those beautiful yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. princess diana came to mind then yes that's who was in my mind was princess diana yeah yeah beautiful okay independence oh fierce strong mm. um again maybe that kind of like an explorer type person really kind of go you know going out there um pushing some boundaries finding mm. their own way i know i'm quite an independent person um i'm thinking i'm thinking of evie yeah Actually, evie yeah. Kind of breaking the mold <laughs> yeah our own amazon warrior yeah yeah uh beyonce came to my mind boom straight the way yeah. she commands that stage and um yeah. you know has grown this in incredible like a career of hers but yeah. she just comes across as a very empowering kind of person who really strives on independence for herself mm. um so yeah a strong image Ooh, straight in there i could yeah. do this all day i could do this all day let's go for a couple more maybe cool. go for a couple more okay and if you're watching this back um let us know who comes up for you in the comments in for some of these cards as well yeah we'd love to know you can see that oh this is interesting winning winning mm. Mm. winning oh i'm finding that one quite hard mm. yeah i'm finding that one quite hard what about you tanya so what popped up for me was like the athlete archetype mm. you know somebody um striving competitive um uh, which can have both light and shadow aspects again, you know, it's that health yeah, and absolutely. that movement and that ambition um, and also the need to win or the it's need to be validated, the drive. So it's positive, it's yeah. you know, light and shadow. So there's lots of aspects in that and everything in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as well, it's, it's it, thinking about that, the drive, that ambition to get to that point, the sacrifices, 
mm. the potential cost mm. to make sure you have that win. Yes. Yeah. That can be quite heavy. Mm. Right, let's do one more on here. And then we'll have a play with these in your um, peer reflection group as well. Yeah. So that, right, so. Ah, nice. Fun. Fun. Ooh, mm. excitement. Um, ooh, who am I thinking? A uh, Chandler from Friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of really kind of like, you know, lighthearted, um, funny. Um, again, I'm kind of feeling that kind of humour. Mm -hmm. which which can be a deflection from things so maybe maybe not taking things too serious but maybe sometimes not taking things seriously enough mm. yeah. so a bit of both bit of both in there um using jokes using humor to deflect from the seriousness of the situation mm. um or to actually just as a defense mm. to kind of mm. keep you know keep themselves safe um yeah i think uh I can't think of any, I can't, I know there's loads of people, but I can't actually think of anybody else that comes to mind with that, apart from Chandler from Friends. Yeah, and that's a beautiful uh, expression, I think. Um, for me, I think you mentioned the Peter Pan archetype earlier. Mm. So he yeah. popped in, into my mind, um, yeah. that like Peter Pan archetype. But also I was thinking about, um, you know, again, you go slightly back to fairy godmothers and stuff like that, because there is that fun, playful kind of wand-like, yeah. Um, energy the unicorn can be playful yeah. um, even I was thinking about um, just like uh, like fairy the fae um, you know those kind of aspects mermaid aspects so it's something yeah. quite imaginative that's coming up for me with that word um, yeah. in there but then also a shadow side of uh, those who use fun in a way to, manip to manipulate others so um, there's kinds of jokes that don't feel like jokes yeah in a way so that, that being the shadow element yeah and what just come up for me when you just said that was very much about exploitation yeah and introducing you know drugs drink mm. especially to younger people mm. kind of as as elements of fun to manipulate pressure. yeah social pressure and things like yeah. that gosh so there's so many ways you can look at all of yeah. these um archetypes and values and they all uh kind of integrate so beautifully in work so i know for me when i'm working with clients uh, i've never thought of looking at it in an archetypal type way working with these cards but these values cards i'll see if i can show you the box of the values cards um buy them online they're great for actually using um to kind of explore anything that's going on in a client's life, especially the icebreakers you know those initial yeah. sessions or the sessions where clients may be feeling a little bit stuck um, so just exploring all of these different words. So these words like health, courage, um, nature, home, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Home for me, the archetype for that would be like the lighthouse coming home. Yeah. Back to my central place, my strength. Uh, happiness, adventure, consistency, learning, loyalty, mm -hmm. uh, connections, patience, security, self-respect. Yeah. Self when you said home, yeah. When you said home, then it's about the lighthouse. For me, it would be a heart. Beautiful yeah so there's so many ways that we can yeah. really explore these cards um and the archetype type energy with clients um mm. uh, for me specifically uh when i talk about archetypes with clients it's more from my coaching kind of aspect when we explore that um when we get to know each other and get to know the parts of us that maybe we like and the parts of us that we want to just understand a bit more about so we can either offer self-compassion or just become aware of those parts because yeah. for us to heal sometimes we were speaking about this earlier we need to be able to be aware of both parts um, or the light and shadow of ourselves and the aspects of ourselves. So these cards are great for exploring um, those. And also I was thinking if you, were, if you just wanted to explore values with clients and what they mean to a client um, and, and kind of exploring from their own perspective, a client's mm -hmm. perspective of what the uh, kind of struggles and the benefits to having that value. So light or shadow in a different word, if they feel uncomfortable for you. Um, so if I was to say like integrity, you know, for a client, what would be the values, the benefit of that? And what would be the other side to that? So yeah. could we have too much integrity, so much so that we're not willing to look at another person's perspective kind of thing, um, because we're so we know in our right um what's the right thing to do here yeah. and we feel really strong with that um, but we're not willing to look at anyone else's point of view yeah it's Beautiful that rigidity ways. of thought rigidity. isn't it yeah so then again you're looking at growth mindset and all that good stuff 
Uh, so if you've watched this, um, which you obviously have because you're here, uh, and you want to take part, if you're not in our membership already and you want to join, this is one of our 40 ways of working creatively online, um, part of the online CPD series. Uh, so join us. If you're watching this because you're in the membership, create your own piece that represents an archetype to you. It can be something, as Gaynor mentioned, that you've um, not seen anywhere before, but you can relate to. It could even be a person or it could be one of the main archetypes that we spoke about or something that we've shared today. Could be a symbol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we invite you to join us on Reflection, Peer Reflection, next Wednesday at 6.30. And okay. Tanya will be joining us for the Reflection with the values cards. With the values we'll cards. We'll have a little bit of fun with those, exactly. Um, wishing you all a wonderful, wonderful week. And we look forward to seeing your creative um creative representations representations <laughs> take, take care. care bye